All right, unit 12, uh, trig angle sum and difference angle identities. Let's back up just a second here. Angle identities. We've done some of these already. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And the, the, the other two guys that go with that, where you divide by sine, divide by cosine. Um, tangent equals sine over cosine. Like all of those are identities. And we've done those before. Hopefully we know them. Now we're going to add some new identities um, to the list. And today we're going to add sum and difference. Um, in fact, if you kind of flip through the packet or flip or look at the calendar, sum and difference identities today and Monday, double identities, and then half identities. So those are the <coughs> kind of the three categories. Um, that we'll do for this unit. All right, we can find exact values of some trig functions using special identities, using our formulas. We will learn three sets of these special identities in this unit. This is what I was just saying. Sum and difference, doubles, and halves. And so that's sort of the, the overview to the whole section or the whole unit is three types of identities. Sum and difference, I guess you could count that as two separate ones, but their formulas are so similar, count them as one. Doubles and halves. Uh, and we go in sort of increasing order of difficulty there. So first, the sum and difference uh, identities. And this is like coming up with these. We're not going to have to know like where these came from. And in fact, you could almost skip down to this arrow before we start writing them. You do not need to memorize these. So these are going to look complicated when I write them out, but don't worry about how complicated they are. We're going to give them to you. So sine of x plus y is sine of x cosine of y plus cosine of x sine of y. Again. You don't even have to memorize it. You just need to know how to use it. So don't worry about, you know, how do I memorize what goes where. We will give them to you. All right, if we changed the positive sign to a negative sign, take a guess. Again, you don't have to memorize these, but when we do memorize them, this is how uh, we learn what goes where. Take a guess how that might affect the equation. It changes the sign. So all the pieces are the same. Sine of x, cosine of y, minus cosine of x, sine of y. Again, these are given. Don't worry about them. Or don't worry about memorizing them. Cosine of x plus y. Cosine of x, cosine of y. <coughs> minus, so that's a little bit weird maybe, because in the formula was plus, and on the right-hand side is minus, sine of x, sine of y. But when we change the argument from plus to minus, it again changes that middle sign. So cosine x, cosine y, plus sine x, sine y. The tangents is the worst one, but again, you're not going to have to memorize them. So tangent of x plus tangent of y all over 1 minus tangent of x, tangent of y. And you might could guess the minus formula because it's the same except the signs are changed. So tangent of x minus tangent of y all over 1 plus tangent of x, tangent of y. Again, on 
the test, you will be given those on a formula sheet. So don't worry about memorizing them. The only ones you'll have to memorize are the double angles. Um, that'll be, well, that won't even be tomorrow. That'll be Tuesday's lesson. But we'll say that when we get there on Tuesday. All right, using them. So memorizing them is not the deal. Using them is the deal. Um, you must make the given angle in a problem a sum or a difference of two known <coughs> unit circle angles. This was that last one on the warm-up of how do I get negative pi over 12. All right, negative pi over 12 is not on the unit circle, but I can rearrange it or I can rewrite it as uh, there was a couple different ways we did it. Um, pi over 6 minus pi over 4 was one way. So we, we rearrange a non-unit circle angle into two unit circle angles. Uh, the key to doing this is to use the sum or difference of two numbers which can reduce, I don't know that we really need to say all this, but reduce with the number in the denominator. You want your reduced angles to be on the unit circle. So like, you've got to rewrite your given angle as a sum or difference of two unit circle angles. Which is why one person suggested on this one, they're like, well, can't I just do pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12? Like, well, yes, that equals negative pi over 12, but no, pi over 12 is not on the unit circle. So yes and no. you gotta, you got to come up with the problem with unit circle angles. All right, so let's say we want to find the exact value of cosine of 5 pi over 12. So job one is to figure out, here it is sort of broken down, like how do I come up with two numbers that add to 5 pi over 12? Well, I could use 4 and 1, I'm switching to a pencil here because this is not the right answer, right? 4 twelfths and 1 twelfth clearly make 5 twelfths. Why am I not okay to use 4 and 1? Which one is not on the inner circle? Right, the 1 twelfth. The 4 twelfth is on the inner circle, right? Because it reduces. So 4 twelfths and 1 twelfths, yes, they had the 5. 1 twelfths isn't on the inner circle. So what should we do instead? How could I add the 5 with unit circle things? 3 and 2, because both of those will reduce. So pi over 4 and pi over 6. <coughs> so that's why we say make sure those two numbers can reduce. So don't use pi over 12 or 7 over 12 because that wouldn't reduce. Or not, Well, 9 over 12 would reduce. Don't use anything that won't reduce. Now substitute the reduced sum or difference in for the 5 pi over 12. Okay, what that means is rewrite 5 pi over 12 as the sum that you came up with. So instead of 5 pi over 12, I'm going to rewrite that as pi over 4 plus pi over 6. That's sort of the hardest part of the problem, in my mind, is figuring out how to make 5 pi over 12 a sum or difference of unit circle things. Because now all I'm going to do is look at my formulas and pick out the one that has cosine and plus, back up there and cosine and plus. That's cosine x. I'm just going to write it out first instead of try to write it out and plug things in. Cosine x, cosine y, 
minus sine x sine y. And the first number is the x, the second number is the y. Cosine pi over 4, cosine pi over 6, minus sine pi over 4, sine pi over 6. Okay with that? Grab the right formula, plug the pieces in. I feel like this is pretty straightforward, so I don't want to rush it, though. Now, the only thing left to do is how well do you know your unit circle? Because now we got four unit circle problems all in this one problem. So fill those in, and then we'll talk about simplifying things in a moment. So we fill in all of the pieces. Multiply fractions, so root 2 times root 3 is root 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus root 2 over 4. Ah, uh, now... root 6 minus root 2 over 4. I can't go any further. Root 6 minus root 2 is not root 4. You can't subtract inside square roots like that. So that's as far as I can go um, with that problem. I, please do not combine root 6 minus root 2. Not that you would ever think about doing it. Never crossed your mind. Of course not. All right, some examples. Oh, you're going to have to flip back and forth when we need the formulas. That's okay. Find the exact value of sine of pi over 12. Um, okay, there's more than one way to work this problem, but just to make sure we're on the same page, let's work it the same way. How do I get pi over 12? Like, got to be minus. I can't add things to get pi over 12. What can I subtract? Is this the one we did in warm-ups? Yeah. Um, pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Because that would be... And again, if you need to start with the over 12, that might be the better way to go if you can't figure it out. So to get 1 twelfth, I could do 3 twelfths minus 2 twelfths which is 1 fourth minus 1 sixth. Those are okay. Those are both on the unit circle. And so now I need to flip over and look for that sine equation with the minus in it. I'm going to write it with x and y's first. If you think you can write it while plugging in on the fly, you can try that. Just be careful because you might mess things up. It's just safer to write it with x's and y's. Label the x's and y's. Plug in and simplify. I'm going to pause and see if you can take that one from there. So start filling things in. Again, show, show the amount of work that you need to show. Maybe you could jump to the end from here. I'm just real hesitant to, to skip steps. Also, if you don't know the unit circle, like this is just going to be a disaster, right? Because each problem has four unit circle problems in it. As I almost messed up the unit circle right there. Okay. Hopefully you're to the point where you can answer these pretty quickly. I, I hope. Most of you are. So root 6, I'll skip one step because I'm almost out of room. Minus root 2 all over 4. So let's see if that's an answer. Root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. Uh-oh. 
Is it an answer? Yes. Which answer is it? B. B. Okay. My guess is that somebody, somebody to get that answer, they may have done um, pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And all of the middle steps would have been backwards and trans, you know, whatever. But you still would have got the same spot. So, again, if you pick different ways to start, all your middle steps will be the same. Your final answer, or all your middle steps might be different, but your final answer should be the same. Number two, a tangent problem. Tangent of... Okay, i got to add up to 13 over 12. In fact, this time, that seems a little high. I'm going to put them both over 12 to start with. Didn't you just do 12 over 12? Yeah. Uh, so the first suggestion was 12 over 12 and 1 over 12. Why is that not, okay? not okay? Right. You have to pick things that are on the unit circle, which means the good news is as long as you pick two things that will reduce they will be on the unit circle because mm -hmm. 6, 4, and 3 are all fine. Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't pick 5 over 12 or 1 over 12, I need to add to 13, though. So what what are some things that could add to 13? I'm going to switch to pencil in case we mess this up. Yeah, 6 and 8 wouldn't make 13, so let's don't even put that one down. Four and nine. That definitely makes thirteen. Uh, do both of those reduce? No. Yeah. No, I use pencil, but they they work. So we're okay with those. Now again, there are all there's always more than one way to get to the answer. So if you're checking with each other or even checking the the work shown on keys, be careful. We may have done it differently. So pi over three plus 3 pi over 4. Okay, this one has more work to it, so I need to start writing small because the algebra on this one is a pain because of the fraction. All right, so tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus tangent x tangent y. Tangent would not be one that you want to skip steps on, probably. Steps? What are those? I just give an answer. It's going to equal the same thing. You're right. Good. The question was, does it matter which one's x and y? Uh, since they're being added, no. Now, if it was subtraction, you'd have to be careful. But when you're adding, it doesn't matter. Well, it's, it's always the first one is x, the second one's y. Again, we're going to get into some algebra here because we're going to have square roots and fractions. It's going to be a mess. Let's see. Tangent pi over 3. What's the tangent of pi over 3? Square root of 3. The tangent of 3 pi over 4? Am I the only one that needs to draw a picture to see that? Maybe. So what's the tangent of 3 pi over 4? Negative 1. Which means I could have just made that minus. 1 minus, now it's the same value, so just be careful about signs. Square root of 3 times negative 1. So clean that up a little bit. Square root of 3 minus 1 over 1 plus square root of 3. Just a little hint here. Um, when working with tangent, 
You probably want to avoid the over six stuff. Do you know why? Because, yeah, you get more complicated. You get root three over three, and then you have a real mess on your hands. So when you're dealing with tangent, pick, pick one of them to be pi over three and work from there, basically, is the, the hint because it makes your algebra easier. Um, but we're still not done with this problem. Like, I'll look at my answers, and none of those are that. How do I fix that? How do I fix that denominator? Good. I multiply by 1 minus square root of 3, because that will fix the entire denominator. Right, the conjugate of the denominator. It's the only way to fix it is to multiply by the conjugate. And so now I've got a FOIL problem in the top and a FOIL problem in the bottom. I need to be super careful. So in the top, first, outside, inside. And last, why is this? I don't think that's right. I did something wrong. Oh, yeah, that should be plus square root of 3. That's the top. Um, I can either foil the bottom or I can clean up the top. Either way, clean it up. By clean it up, I mean collect like terms. So negative 4. Plus, how many square roots 3 do I have? 2 square root 3. When I FOIL the bottom, I should get a better answer. right? The whole point of multiplying by a conjugate is to make square roots go away. So if those square roots, they better go away. If they don't, I messed up. Let's see what happens. So first, outside, inside. Oh, that's good news. And then last, be careful with root 3 times root 3. It's just 3. The O and the I cancel out always. When you multiply by a conjugate, the O and the I cancel out. That's why we multiply by a conjugate. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. I, I can reduce. As, be careful, though. And... You know, if you need to, you can put them each over negative 2 if that, like that, you don't have to show that step, you don't have to do that step, but that's, that's what you're doing in your brain. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So 2 minus square root of 3. Oh, be careful looking at your answer choices because they all kind of look the same. But I believe that would be answer choice D. So tangents are a pain because of the fractions. Um, again, if tangents involved, I would say use pi over 3 and figure it out from there. That way you avoid the 6 stuff. Let's... time-wise. We're almost done because the when we get to the next page, it looks like it's continuation, but this is going to be Monday. So we don't have to get to that. So there's two left. The tangent one's probably harder. Let's do the tangent one. Let's start the tangent one. I'll see if you can finish the tangent one. So I should write a little smaller and start more to the left so I have room to, to grow. So I want to get to over 23 over 12. Okay, my, my tangent trick to avoid the mess is make one of them equal to pi over 3. 
Is that going to work for this one? Let's see. If I put a 4 there, I can't get to 19. Can't use squares. Let's see. What if I do? Let's see what I'm going to switch to a pencil here so I don't mess this up. If I do three and twenty, right? I'm basically I'm, I need to add to twenty-three, and I'd really like to avoid the six in the denominator if I can. So does this work? So that'd be pi over four. 20 over 12. That reduces by by 4, so that gives me 5 pi over 3. So that works, and I avoided the 6 in the denominator. So I like that. That should make my life a little bit easier. So tangent pi over 4. Here I'm skipping that step of writing it out because with x's and y's. Because they're always in order. x, y, x, y. Okay, the rest well, let's say the rest is algebra. The rest isn't quite algebra because there's some unit circle stuff in there. I'm going to press pause, see if you can finish it from there. So there we are up to filling in the unit circle values. Then we would need to fix the denominator by multiplying by a conjugate. I'm going to hit pause again and let you try it. So that would be negative 2 plus square root of 3. Algebra, 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 algebra. All right, today's assignment is worksheet 1 in the packet that I just passed out or that's available online if you're playing along at home. It's only nine problems. Most of them are multiple choice. So try those. Answers will be in Schoology. Obviously on Monday I'll be happy to answer questions about them.